Hey everybody, welcome back. Now Solana is one of these cutting edge blockchains that some view as perhaps the ultimate ETH killer. And a good question to ask is, well, how far can prices go this market cycle bull run? And looking at all indicators, I think we have a fair way to go. Now, Solana have been founded by a group of engineers who have been working together for over 15 years. And it uses an innovative technology called proof of history that allows computers who don't trust each other to agree on time. Now, I'll explain what that means later on, but the implication is that you can have what are called execution orders, which means that transactions can't be front run, right? Big potential to disrupt Wall Street and their existing high frequency trading systems on the New York Stock Exchange and on NASDAQ. And this is really just the beginning. Now, Solana is actually the fastest single chain blockchain out there at the moment. 65,000 transactions per second, scalable up to 700,000. Right, with gas fees at only a fraction of a cent. No other layer one touches this. Right, if you look at Near or Elrond with 100,000 transactions per second, they use multi-chain solutions, sharding, and that's going to be the case with Ethereum 2.0 as well. Right, so Solana, right, in a perfect position to disrupt uh, Visa, global payment systems like Visa. Right, very exciting stuff. A lot of potential right there. Now, Solana also offers some distinct advantages for DeFi users. It's blisteringly fast speed, plus the fact that it has execution orders, means that you can have DEXs, decentralized exchanges, with central limit order books, right? The best of both worlds. Now you get the performance of a Binance or a Coinbase Pro, but in DeFi, on Solana, pretty fantastic. Now, in this video, we're gonna look at Solana's interesting history and technology. We're gonna look at what it offers DeFi users. Instead of Uniswap on Ethereum, PancakeSwap on the Binance Smart Chain, we've got Radium and AMM on Solana. We've also got Serum and Dex Labs with central order limit books and bells and whistles like limit orders. Fantastic. And of course, we're going to look at some Solana price predictions. In fact, I'm working on a separate video now dedicated to Solana price predictions. It's going to be using data based on a blog post I recently published, which I'll link down below. All right, if this sounds interesting to you, please feel free to give me a like and a subscribe and Let's dig in. All right, so Solana was built by a group of engineers, right, with deep expertise in building high performance distributed systems at scale, right? So in other words, they had high expertise in building systems where a large number of computers sitting in different places could come together, talk to each other and agree on things. Now, the founding members of the team, right, and that includes Anatoly Yakovenko and Greg Fitzgerald, they've been working together for over 15 years at Qualcomm. And that's important because it alleviates the risk of divergent visions that have fractured many early blockchain teams. For example, just look at Ethereum. This is an old group photo. There's Vitalik Buterin, who still runs the show. You've got Gavin Wood, who left and founded Polkadot. You've got Charles Hoskinson, who left and founded Cardano, and he left on rather bad terms as he and Vitalik never really saw eye to eye uh, with the direction they wanted to take Ethereum back in the days. And we know how different Ethereum and Cardano are, right? They're the kind of polar opposites of each other. Ethereum's all about pushing ahead quickly. They have a kind of break it and fix it attitude. Cardano is all about perfecting their product before release, which is why they're five years late from the smart contract scene. But back to Solana, right? So Solana founders Anatoly and Greg. They've been working together for a long time, over 15 years, starting as colleagues at the wireless communications company Qualcomm, where they were both staff engineers. And while working there together, they noticed big problems with existing blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Right, so one of the issues was transaction scaling. Bitcoin and Ethereum, they struggled to scale beyond 15 transactions per second when centralized systems such as Visa required peaks that were orders of magnitude high, 65,000 transactions per second. And Solana's founders, Anatoly Greg, they felt that without some sort of a reliable clock that provided an execution order for transactions, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they could never graduate to being a global payment system or a supercomputer that many blockchain enthusiasts had dreamt them up to be. So that's one issue, transaction scaling. Another issue, especially with Ethereum transactions, are people and bots front running your transactions. Now, what does this mean? Well, the crypto markets are by definition lit markets. Right? When you submit a transaction on Ethereum, it's broadcasted publicly on Etherscan. Right? The transaction sits in the mempool until a miner picks it up. It has nowhere else to go. 
right? Your transaction is effectively a sitting duck. Every predator in the pool can see it. Now what this means is that you're going to have bots that prey on your transaction. They jump ahead of you. They bid a higher gas fee and then end up front running your transaction. They sneak in ahead. They'll end up getting a slightly better price on the purchase you wanted to make, sell it immediately after and then make a profit. Now, there are a ton of bots out there making money doing this. Front running attacks like this are called sandwich attacks. There's a whole website called sandwich.wtf where you can put in your web free wallet address, for example, your MetaMask address and see whether you've been sandwiched before. Right? Maybe check it out for good fun. Now, this is the nature of the dog eat dog world of Ethereum. It's a lit market, right? Everyone's transactions are public. We're all vying for the miners attention through a gas fee bidding war effectively. And predators, they can see the prey coming. And unfortunately, the prey can also see the predators, but they can't escape. Now on Solana, no one's going to front run you because you have execution orders. Solana was built to prevent front running. So how did Anatoly and Greg and the team do it, right? How did they solve these transaction scaling and front running problems? Well, they toiled away and they came up with a solution called proof of history. And in 2017, they explained it in a white paper, like all good crypto projects. Now, proof of history was an innovative approach to timekeeping, right? Since blockchain is about decentralization with users submitting transactions all across the world for different validators to verify, is there a way for us to, I guess, order the transactions and do so at high speeds and volumes. Well, yes, that's what proof of history provides. It's basically a reliable clock, right? That allows Solana to create an execution order for transactions. Now, this technology was very hard to develop. Getting computers who don't trust each other to agree on time was a highly technical challenge that leveraged 40 years of distributed systems research into the world of blockchain, right? This is where Anatoly and Greg's vast experience working as engineers together at Qualcomm and making disparate systems communicate with each other had become an absolute asset to this endeavor. Now, when it comes to tech specs, proof of history allows Solana to achieve global state finality for transactions in under a second and the ability to execute a very high number of transactions quickly, over 65,000 transactions per second, scalable up to hundreds of thousands, which is the highest by a single chain layer one solution by far. Right? Meanwhile, if you look at ETH 2.0, 100,000 transactions per second, but that's using a multi-chain solution, which um, relies on sharding to achieve this kind of performance. And incredibly, Solana achieves all of this without compromising on decentralization or security. So the bottom line is, Solana scales like top centralized systems, for example, Visa, except it's decentralized. And it doesn't sacrifice security. In fact, Solana has more validators than Cosmos, Polkadot, Algorand, and Nier combined. It only really trails Avalanche and Ethereum when it comes to the number of validators. Very nice. And on the issue of front running, well, no one's gonna front run you on Solana because you have execution orders, right? Solana was built to prevent front running. No more bots being able to prey on transactions lying around, like sitting ducks in the mempool because you have execution orders that prevents bots from sneaking in transactions in front of yours. Good riddance. Now, for those interested in a bit of history, um, let's talk briefly about Solana's development over time, including where it got the name Solana from. Right now, Anatoly first coded up his code base for proof of history in the language C, before recoding it in a language called Rust, which is now Solana's native language for its smart contracts. In contrast, the Ethereum blockchain and its derivatives, such as the Binance Smart Chain and Avalanche as well, it uses a language called Solidity for its smart contracts so that they're compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. That's why you can use MetaMask for these blockchains as well as Ethereum. Now, during the early days, the Solana co-founders, Anatoly, Greg, along with fellow Qualcomm engineer, Stephen Ackridge, they worked under the name Loom. Now, this was their brand name back then. And Loom's first milestone was getting computers who didn't trust each other to agree on time, right? Big milestone, awesome stuff. And then they showed that the technology was capable of processing 10,000 transactions in under a second, right? And then they realized that they could massively improve this further by incorporating GPUs, graphical processing units. Right? Now, by late 2018, the team was able to demo a testnet capable of an average 200,000 transactions per second across 150 nodes. Really awesome. Now, unfortunately, at around the same time in 2018, an Ethereum project called the Loom Network sprung up and caused a lot of confusion in the crypto community. And so the team decided that they were going to rebrand and chose the name Solana. 
right? Which was actually a nod to this small beach town of Solana Beach, just north of San Diego, where Anatoly, Greg, and Steven lived and surfed for three years while they worked at Qualcomm together. I think that's pretty sweet. All right, so let's now talk about disruption potential because that's really gonna be the main driver for Solana prices going ahead. Now, Solana's technology it makes it an ideal technology to disrupt Wall Street, where you've got high volume, high frequency trading. Now, traditionally, due to technology limitations, you want to be close to the stock exchange when trading in order to get the lowest latency. So having a platform where proximity to the stock market doesn't matter, a platform that can handle the high volume of trades of the New York Stock Exchange, of NASDAQ, where you've got execution queues and all the bells and whistles the proprietary systems powering these exchanges right now are using, well, that's what Solana is about. And until recently, that's the use case Solana became known for, right? Its potential to disrupt Wall Street. But uh, it turns out more and more people were now seeing a Solana as kind of like the ultimate ETH killer in the DeFi space as well. Now, I'm going to make a dedicated DeFi with Solana video soon, but I'll give you a quick overview now. Now, when it comes to Web3 wallets for DeFi, Right, instead of MetaMask, which is still by far the most popular Web3 wallet for the Ethereum blockchain um, and others compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine, such as Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, Avalanche, and so forth. So here is MetaMask. You will need a dedicated Solana wallet. It's not gonna work with MetaMask because Solana isn't compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. Now, right now, Phantom is the closest Web3 wallet to MetaMask. Here is my Phantom wallet here. You can install it as a Chrome extension, just like MetaMask. And many users actually argue it's better than MetaMask. They say that it's what MetaMask should have been, right? And that's one of the benefits of building something up from the ground, right? Building something up from scratch, an ethos that both Solana and Cardano subscribe to. You get to make something new and better than what was the de facto thing before. Now, an alternative to Phantom is Soulflare, right? All right, next up are the decentralized exchanges or DEXs. So on Ethereum, the biggest DEX is Uniswap. And on the Binance Smart Chain, we've got the Qt Pancake Swap. On Solana, the corresponding AMM, Automated Market Maker, DEX is Radium. But uh, Solana has something rather special up its sleeve. Alongside Radium, it's got Serum and its derivative DEX Lab, which are very interesting DEXs that offer something Uniswap and PancakeSwap cannot. A central limit order book functionality running on Solana's mainnet. Right. Now this means that you can get Binance or Coinbase-like performance, right? A centralized exchange performance, but on a decentralized exchange, a DEX. Now this is only possible because of Solana's very high throughput, powered by its cutting edge proof of history technology. And it is a distinguishing feature like this that gives Solana a distinct advantage over other layer ones, right? This is a really crucial point. Right now, it's still early days in DeFi, so there's enough room for everybody. For example, Uniswap came out right and took the DeFi world by storm and then pancake swap cloned the open source code added a cute ui right added staking pools for single asset staking and farms for dual asset staking where you can stake lp tokens and you also had cheap gas fees and bank the binance smart chain absolutely exploded in early 2021 but uh, the argument is eventually all the platforms are going to have all the top features as standard as widespread DeFi adoption continues. And it's at this point that the only thing left to improve are things like, for example, having a centralized exchange performance, execution orders, right? Now, where are people going to go then? Solana. Well, that's the argument at least. All right, moving on to price predictions. How exciting. Now, just like with DeFi with Solana, I'm going to do a separate video on Solana price predictions altogether, which is going to be based on this blog article here I published last night, which I'll link down below if you'd like to check it out now. Now, I'm going to briefly discuss three sensible options for predicting where the Solana price might be by the end of this market cycle bull run. Now, when is that going to be? That really is a separate um, argument. It's a, it's a rather rigorous debate in the crypto community when that's going to be, when the bull run is going to be over. It could be fairly soon towards the end of this year, 2021, or it could be all the way towards the end of next year, um, 2022, if you believe in the expanding cycles theory. Right? I'm not going to get into that at the moment. So in short, the three approaches for predicting Solana prices, we're going to be looking at these based on either predicting where the market cap of Solana is going to be or predicting where the Solana Ethereum valuations will be, right, by the end of the bull run, which is a standard approach for making predictions on layer one solutions, trying to eat a share of Ethereum's lunch. Um, 
Or number three, predicting where the market dominance of Solana is going to be. How much market share will Solana capture away from Ethereum? All right, so let's look at a simple example based around market cap, right? We're going to make an argument based on the market cap. So right now, the crypto total market cap sits at around $2 trillion. And let's say we predict that it's going to go to $10 trillion by the end of the market cycle bull run, right? Maybe this is going to be a blow off top target for the entire crypto space. That's a 5x from here. Now, assuming that ETH maintains its current market dominance, which is basically around 20%, um, then the price of ETH is going to go up five times as well alongside the total crypto market cap and we're going to end up with the price of Ethereum approaching almost $20,000, right? Similarly, assuming Solana maintains its current market dominance, which is actually around 2%, right? So roughly 2% of investor funds at the moment uh, in the crypto space is sitting with Solana, right? Then its price also goes up five times and we end up with essentially a $750 Solana. Right. Fairly simple argument, just one example. And you can tune this to your level of bullishness or bearishness by, for instance, making higher or lower targets on the total crypto market cap. Right. And that'll give you higher and lower price targets for Solana, respectively. So just then I use the standard um, standard market cap, total market cap target of $10 trillion. And that's what gave us a $750 Solana. But Again, you can tune this to your heart's content. All right, the second approach is projecting where the Solana Ethereum valuations will be by the end of the bull run. So for instance, you might argue that even though right now, one Solana is roughly four to 5%, right, of one Ethereum, then by the end of the market cycle, maybe you're quite bullish on Solana's technology and adoption. And you feel like Solana is gonna reach say, maybe 10%, right, of the price of an ETH. Right, double what it is now. So that would mean roughly a price of $1,700 per Solana, right, per Sol. Or if you're feeling bearish, you might argue that the price of Sol will actually decline from where it is now, right? Decline from its 5% at the moment and go down to maybe 2%, right? And that's gonna give us a price of $340 per Solana. And finally, just like the market cap example earlier, you can tune the total crypto market cap target as well. Right right now, I've set them all to be $10 trillion, but you can lift this higher if you feel quite bullish on where the total market is gonna go, um, or something lower if you feel more bearish. There are several degrees of freedom here to play around with. I hope that made sense. All right, finally, the market dominance approach. Now, this is where you make a projection on the market dominance of Solana versus Ethereum, right, by the end of the bull run. And it's actually on the same flavor as the Solana ETH valuation method, mathematically speaking. Pros and cons to both, which I'll explain further in the dedicated video. All right, but in the meantime, let's go through a quick example of this market dominance approach. And it begins like this. So at the moment, Solana has a market dominance of two to three percent so basically out of the total crypto market cap two trillion dollars of investor money Solana has captured roughly two to three percent of that which is about 50 billion dollars that's the market cap of Solana and that's roughly 12 percent one eighth of the market cap of Ethereum right and again we're comparing against Ethereum because well firstly ETH is the essentially the altcoin index but more importantly here Solana is competing against Ethereum so it makes sense to use Ethereum as the benchmark right it's a fairly standard approach and now for the fun bit this is where you ask yourself do I expect the market dominance relative to Ethereum to go up or down by the end of the bull run right so if you're feeling bullish about Solana you feel like it's going to have more bullish momentum compared to Ethereum you might argue that by the end of the bull run Solana is going to have a relative market share of 20% of ETH right up from 12% up to 20% and in that bullish scenario Solana is going to go to roughly 13 to 1400 dollars right so if Solana captures 20% of Ethereum's market share, then we're looking at a $13 to $1,400 Solana. On the other hand, if you're feeling a bit more bearish, and you might argue that I expect the market dominance, relative market dominance of Solana versus ETH to decrease from its current level of 12% down to 5% by the end of the market run, right? In that case, Solana is gonna go to $350, right? 
parameter. So that's the bearish case. And so again, you can tune all of these parameters. You can tune these figures here to accommodate your level of bullishness or bearishness. And you can also tune what you believe the total crypto market cap target is going to be. And that's going to change these figures here as well. All right, Solana. In my opinion, one of the true top-notch blockchains out there that's got real ETH killing potential, perhaps even more so than Cardano. We'll see. It's cutting edge technology with its proof of history consensus mechanisms. Probably won't be adopted by other blockchains anytime soon because as co-founder Anatoly once said, it is rather technically challenging to implement. Right. It's got a great long-term team. Solana's team, they've been together for such a long time, fantastic. Solana is super fast, it is decentralized and secure, and has the potential to seriously disrupt traditional financial systems like Visa, alongside the proprietary systems powering Wall Street exchanges. Solana also offers unique advantages to DeFi, bringing the perks of centralized exchanges and its order book functionality, execution orders, onto Solana's DEXs like Serum and DEXLAB. And finally, Solana's market cap is still fairly small which means plenty of upside in the months and years ahead. What's there not to love? All right, if you enjoy this content, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. Have a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.